Children of helicopter parents, what was the worst or most embarrassing thing they put you through? Story 1. My mom read in my diary that I had lost my virginity to my then-boyfriend, X. She called the principal of my school to tell him that X had forced me. Story 2. When I was in grade 9, my parents only allowed me to use my laptop in the kitchen to do my homework. They had blocked Facebook, but I found websites that helped me use Facebook chat. But my dad turned the internet on and off every other hour from 8 in the morning until midnight. It was ridiculous, because I could never sit down long enough to get any work done before the internet was gone, and I had to wait for the next hour. My dad found out about the chat sites I used as a workaround for Facebook and blocked those too. I resorted to using Bing Bar's Facebook chat function, which was slow and glitchy. In grade 11 and 12, my parents shut off my internet at 1 in the morning and removed parental controls. I went crazy and watched Netflix and talked to people all the time, which obviously had a negative toll on my grades. Story 3 Up until I left for college, my bedtime was 9 p.m. every night. I wasn't supposed to be on the phone past 8.30 p.m., and I wasn't allowed to go outside by myself. I couldn't have friends over after 7 p.m., and I couldn't go to a boy's house until the summer after high school. I had to show my parents my grades every semester to prove I was successful. I rode the bus until my senior year because he wouldn't take me to get my license until I was 17. He pretty much told me that I had to attend a certain college because it was X amount of time away from home. While I'm in college, he makes me show him my grades, check in once a week with three different family members, and makes me move home every summer. Now that I'm applying for master's programs and trying to move away, every conversation ends with an argument about me moving away and trying to start my own life. My parents were divorced, and when my mom died, I moved in with my dad and his girlfriend at the age of 10. The first time I told him no, he tried to hit me with a belt. He's been paying for my college out of the benefits I received from my mother, which I didn't even know about, until a brother from my mom's side told me about them. My dad became enraged when I found out about the money, and he cut off communication with that side of the family. Showing grades is totally normal, until they surprise visit campus trying to fact check or when my then boyfriend hung himself and my grades dropped. He told me I was too stupid for college and wasting his money and needed to drop out. He and his girlfriend worked all the time, so I went to a babysitter until I was a sophomore in high school. I feel like I don't have the ability to make friends now, because my social interactions were really limited due to some of his rules. I don't really know how to have a relationship with men growing up. I just did whatever would make them happy and not get upset with me. I don't really know how to do a lot of life things myself. My boyfriend is slowly teaching me, thank God. I stayed the night at my then-boyfriend's house, and my dad told me I must have just spent the last year in school sleeping around, and no one would want me because of it. And it's the longest relationship I've ever been in, and he's helping me move away. I was accepted to a master's program in Canada and one in my home state, and I'm terrified to leave, so I'm going to the in-state one. It's farther away than now, so I see it as a baby step. No one in our family lives outside an hour's drive from each other. I'm the first to go to college and actually finish, and I'm going to get away. Story 4 I wasn't allowed to hang out with girls when I was younger, and one day I was at the school park with some of my friends. There were a couple of girls there, too. My mom called me on the phone to ask who I was hanging out with. I only mentioned my guy friends. Well, apparently my mom was spying on me with binoculars. The park was just a few blocks from my house. As soon as she saw the girls, she drove to the park, got out, and made a big scene about it in front of everyone and made me go home. That probably wasn't even the most embarrassing thing she's put me through. There have been countless other situations. Story 5 This is not the most embarrassing thing, but it's the only one I feel comfortable sharing. She would constantly go through my phone and read everything when I wasn't around. And I'd find out when she brought up embarrassing information in front of friends, family, or even a crush. And messaged him a long message that I don't even want to know what it said. All I know is that he was super uncomfortable when he asked me if I knew she had contacted him. The worst part about it was that I never felt a sense of freedom. I always felt watched. I was never a bad kid, but I felt violated every day and night. I felt like I never had my own sense of self. Story 6 I am still a teenager, so I'm still dealing with my parents' helicopter habits. My parents were furious when they found out I had watched The Hunger Games at a friend's house. The same thing happens whenever I watch a movie rated PG or above. They're not there to fast forward through the kissing scenes and mild cursing. They don't allow me to spend money without telling them first. Once, I bought a pack of gum without telling them, and it wasn't pretty. Long story short, I got my phone taken away for a week after being chewed out for a solid hour. My dad has software on my phone that tells him whatever I do on the internet including texting and calling. He'll probably see this, but I don't care. They better stop typing now, or they might catch me. Story 7 When I was 17, my mother once drove to my workplace after school to check and make sure I was actually working. She then freaked out on me when I got home because she claimed I wasn't there. When really, she just didn't drive all the way into the parking lot to avoid being seen since she drives such a distinct car. This was around her phase of thinking I was on hardcore drugs and sleeping with the entire male population in my town. 
I was an A-plus student who worked every day after school plus weekends. I don't know when she thought I'd have time for all of that. Story 8. One of the more memorable experiences. When I was a freshman, my cousin was a senior, and through him, I made a lot of friends who were upperclassmen. So at the end of the year, I got invited to go to prom. My parents made my date, who was just a friend, come over two weeks before prom and basically asked him every question imaginable. They got his phone number, home number, email, and the works. He was super chill about it because my cousin had warned him beforehand. When prom actually came around, I wasn't allowed to ride in the limo with everyone else. Instead, my mom drove me in her ugly Astro van that looked like the mystery machine, and she had my siblings and cousins packed in there. When we got to the venue, she got off with me and asked an administrator if she could stay. Thank God, he said now. Oh, and I had a curfew. 8.30 p.m. It was 7 when I got there. Ugh. Story 9. When I went away to college, my parents would call me every day. I went away to a fraternity weekend retreat during my freshman year where us pledges weren't supposed to bring our phones. I told my parents that I was going away for three days and not to call me. On the day we were coming back, the guy driving us got a call. He then handed me his phone and told me to call my parents. It turns out that when my parents couldn't reach me for three days, they came to my college and went around my dorm and half the campus asking everyone if they had seen their lost little boy. I was 18 at the time. On top of that, since I was on their family cell phone plan, they looked up all the numbers I had recently called and texted. They proceeded to call everyone, letting them know I was lost and asking if they knew where I was. This included girls that I had crushes on but barely knew, random classmates and mild acquaintances. When I got back to my worried parents waiting for me at my dorm, I found my cell phone with a bunch of messages of people asking if I was okay and letting me know my parents were looking for me. For the next day, every one in five people I walked past would ask me if I had talked to my parents because they were looking for me. Story 10. Both parents have known, to an extent, mental disorders on top of the whole helicopter thing. Illusions of grandeur from mom, delusions and paranoia from dad. Mom would walk me, a girl, through all the details of all the brutal assaults she could imagine and dazzle it up with news stories before going in public anywhere with me or if the subject of men somehow came up. Left me traumatized for a long time, not being able to look at boys or men. Looked at porn out of curiosity or something at 10 years old. Can't really remember due to the trauma that followed. They found my search history because I didn't know how to delete it or safely use the internet and proceeded to interrogate me all night to see the extent to which I was defiled and who must have been molesting me. There was no one. I was homeschooled and honestly almost threw out names or thought up false events. I was beaten on and off all night till I puked. Still was interrogated as I was told to clean up the puke. I could barely move. I was shaking and just felt like I was curling in on myself physically. They accused me of being defensive because I couldn't sit upright and normal. I would sit huddled up that I had backlash welt in my right thigh for a few days. I was told repeatedly by them that this wasn't abuse and I deserved it. They had to, because they loved me and made me hug them after everything, then sleep on the couch. I could not be trusted with a the room, they said. I was treated worse than a dog for a year as grounding and still had the event referenced as blackmail for years. I was about 18 by the time they stopped really talking about it. At 20 now, I learned that they actually think they may have gone too far and screwed me up mentally. You don't say. Happy conclusion for those who need to hear it. I turned out fine. We still talk, though I plan to cut ties. They're very emotionally dependent and fear that I will leave them. I distanced myself from them, somehow avoided drawing attention to them as the abusers, and got myself help by admitting myself to a mental hospital as a teen, and then continuing to seek help and getting around my entire family to do so. I don't talk about this stuff anymore, or really label my family as anything more than crazy. I just want to leave it in the past and define myself by what I do now as an adult. Story 11 as someone who works in an ER, I get tired of helicopter parents bringing in their children for ridiculous reasons, such as a nosebleed that occurred a week ago or foot pain after PE. The worst cases are when parents bring in their over 18-year-old children for drug tests. When this happens, I love to turn the legal adult and ask for their consent. This usually leads to the parent getting angry and shouting about how they are the parent and pay the insurance, etc. I then remind them that their child is now an adult, and without their express consent, I cannot perform any tests on them. I've seen many young adults refuse all lab work after this conversation. The parents usually end up calling the hospital administrator, who tells them the same thing. I'm also not allowed to give out any information over the phone, nor can I enter a patient's room without express permission. Watching people's reactions when they can't get their way is always interesting. Story 12. When I was engaged to my now husband, my parents gave me many lectures about how I couldn't lean my head on his shoulder or be alone with him. They believed it would lead him to have uncontrollable urges and that he would end up raping me. According to them, it would be my fault for working him up. These lectures increased in absurdity and became a daily occurrence. Fortunately, my husband stuck it out, and things are much better now that we live together on the other side of the country. Story 13. 
The parents weren't exactly helicopter parents, but my dad was very strict about movies. For instance, when I was in high school, I wanted to go to the movies with my friends to see a G.I. Joe movie. I wanted to do something fun. My dad said he wouldn't let me go unless I wrote a paper on the movie's redeeming qualities and Christian principles after I watched it. Story 14. I didn't go to any school dance or sports events, so I had no prom or anything. I wasn't allowed to go to the mall by myself when I was 19 years old. My dad would follow me around, walking about five feet behind me. When I was 20, I said I was going to get a cell phone and got into a big fight with my parents because they didn't want me to have one. I had been working since I was 15 and was going to pay for it myself. I couldn't lock the door to my bedroom or the bathroom, even in my early 20s. Moving out was the best thing ever. I remember when I was 12 or so, my mom, little sister, who was seven at the time, and I went to Costco to do some shopping. My dad showed up dressed as a clown, he used to dress up for birthday parties, and followed me and my little sister around honking his clown horn in our ears, yelling to all the guys that he was our dad. He still shows up at my work and tells my coworker to tell me that daddy is here to see me. I'm 31. I think the last time I called him daddy was when I was seven or eight. Nobody calls him daddy. Story 15. One night, I decided to visit my boyfriend at his apartment for some TV time and cuddles. I ended up restarting my phone and forgetting to turn it back on. While cuddling in front of the television, I fell asleep. At around midnight, my mom called, and he went straight to voicemail. Any logical person would just figure the phone died or just didn't have service. Very reasonable where I live. Not my mother. She called the cops and tried to report me missing, which ended with the police asking how long I had been gone. She responded with, about eight hours. They told her to wait until morning. At this point, it was about 1 a.m. and I was still asleep. We both were. Fast forward about two hours, and my mother had called and woken up all of my friends hunting for me with no luck. She called my best friend, and she told her that I was at my boyfriend's apartment. My mother now knew that I was safe and not missing. This was not enough for her, though. She ended up coming to the apartment after pestering my best friend enough for the location. My best friend didn't know the exact apartment, so she just told her the complex name and went back to bed. I woke up at almost four in the morning to my mother banging on the door, yelling, Personably anxious! Open the freaking door! I ran, thinking something was wrong, and flung open the door to find her red. Metaphorical steam was pouring from her ears. She yelled for me to get in my truck and get home now. The next day, when I went to visit my boyfriend and apologized profusely for what my mother had done, I discovered that my mom had banged on every single door until she found the right one. I was 18 at the time. It didn't take much longer before my relationship ended. This is one of very, very, very many stories. Story 16. I was in the school musical, and it was my first lead role. I was singing a duet with the cutest boy in school, even though I was playing his mom. This was my moment, and I was sure a performance would follow. Then the fire alarm went off. The stage manager signaled to us that it was just the fog machine and to keep going, so we did. The cute guy started to get nervous, so I grabbed his hand to give him strength. Imagine Tina Belcher grabbing zombie Jimmy Pasto Jr.'s butt, and you'll get a pretty good idea of how a big deal this was for me. Of course, the audience was awkwardly leaving because, you know, the fire alarm was going off. Just then, I saw a blurry shape out of the corner of my eye. Someone was running towards me. It was a woman. She was screaming. It was my mother. She ran up to me on the stage, ripped me away from Jimmy Jr.'s arms, and screamed into my microphone. What are you doing? There's a fire! Get these kids out of here! Who the hell's in charge here? I was shunned for weeks. And Twelve years later, my drama teacher still tells the story to his students. Then there was the time she called my boss and told him I needed a midday nap because I was too tired. I was 22. Story 17. One time I went to the mall with my friends, which was very rare because I didn't often get to have friends. Obviously, to get there, my parents had to drop me off. But then, an hour into our hangout session, which consisted of walking around the mall and me telling her jokes, it was fun, my mom texted me and asked where I was. I texted her back and told her I was at the mall where she dropped me off. She accused me of leaving and demanded that I take a picture of where I am to prove I'm still there. Reluctantly, I did, confiding in my date about my narcissistic mother for the first time to anyone. Telling someone about it felt good. Until five minutes later, she used the picture I sent to her to find where I was and approached me. This is when I discovered she never actually went home and was following me around the mall the whole time, watching what I was doing. She told me we had to leave right now because she was worried I'd run away and grabbed me by my arm to take me away, leaving my date there. This isn't the only time she embarrassed me. Among others, she called a good friend of mine's parents to tell them he was doing drugs. He wasn't. So I wouldn't ask to go over to see him. Story 18 I never had any friends until I was in high school. My first sleepover was at 13. I always had to leave early for my high school graduation and all of my birthday parties. My mom only allowed me to be out for one or two hours, and she would text me every 10 minutes to check in. I had to ask for permission to leave the house, even just to take the dog out, 
My cell phone was given to my parents at 10 o'clock every night, and I had to give them my passwords for every website I visited. I suffered from depression, anxiety, and nervous breakdowns on a daily basis. The first date with my boyfriend, when I was 20, was only allowed to last for half an hour. My mom had to be there the whole time. I finally moved out a few months ago, but I still get texts from my mom every hour on the hour. And I still have anxiety and trouble having fun and making friends. Story 19. My buddy had the worst helicopter mom. We went to college three hours away from his hometown and ended up at a random after-bar party with people we had just met that night. His mom showed up. We had no idea how she found us. Walked in, grabbed him by the ear, and dragged him out to our car. She then proceeded to drive him back to our hometown. The next day, she made him get a ride back to college with his former high school sweetheart, whom he had recently broken up with. She did all of this because she didn't approve of the breakup. 